When it comes to Christmas, there's not a more iconic city in the world than New York City. This place just is at the center of it all, with the lights and the trees, the ice skating at Rockefeller Center, and the shopping. If you are looking for the perfect gift for somebody, good chance you're gonna find it here. This city is also the backdrop for some of my favorite Christmas movies like Elf and Home Alone 2 and Miracle on 34th Street. And today, this city is buzzing with the sights and the sounds of Christmas. But for many of us, Christmas is a season that brings with it added stress and anxiety. The pressures to create the perfect Christmas memories with family and friends or to find that perfect Christmas gift can sometimes be overwhelming. I remember one Christmas several years back, I spent weeks running around looking for the perfect gift for my wife, Julie. Nothing seemed to be just right. Nothing seemed to express what I wanted to express to her through my gift. So I ended up spending more time and probably more money than I should have that year, all just to try to find the right present. See, I was so focused on the presents that I needed to find that I forgot that Christmas is really all about celebrating God's presence with us. That's what that word Emmanuel means, God with us. But recently I've been giving all of this a whole lot more thought. What if I told you that I've come to believe that Christmas is really all about the gifts? All the kids in the room probably just went, yeah. But many of you would be wondering, what do you mean, Todd? It's all about the, the gifts. I thought you just said that it's not about the presence, but it's about the presence of God with us, Jesus. And that gift giving is just the commercialization of what should be a holy celebration. Well, before you think I've gone over to the dark side, hear me out. I personally love taking the time to figure out that perfect gift for my wife, Julie, or our son, Jefferson, or his fiance, Cassie. I love the smiles on their faces or the surprised look in their eyes when I give them something they really love and weren't expecting. And during this time of the year, I love seeing people being generous with people, whether it's being generous with those that they're close to or giving to bless a complete stranger. It's all made me come to think that Christmas is really more about the gifts than I used to believe. Think for a moment about the best gift that you ever received. If you need to, close your eyes and just picture it. Maybe it was something that was out of reach for you financially, but someone sacrificed to buy it for you. Or maybe it was handcrafted specifically with you in mind. Or maybe it was something you never even thought to ask for. For me, when I was a kid, the greatest gift had to do with Star Trek. Star Trek was the best show on TV and I thought I was Captain Kirk running around. My parents knew I loved the show, so one Christmas, they bought me these walkie-talkies that were designed to look exactly like the ones they used on Star Trek. They flipped open, they even made the noises and the beeps like the ones on the show. They were amazing. My friends and I played with those things every day that year. Later on as a dad, I remembered that the greatest gift I ever received was a hand-drawn picture my son Jefferson made for me when he was six or seven years old. And it said that I was the greatest dad in the world. Man, that drawing was more valuable to me than anything else I received that year. I still have it. Here's what I've come to realize. The significance of a gift is not only determined by the cost, but also by what it communicates. See, down deep, we know this to be true. Good gifts are not about what you spend, but what it says. The best gifts are unexpected. They're the things that somebody knew you needed before you even knew you needed it. They're the gifts from people who remembered a passing comment about your favorite sports team from six months ago. Or they're the handmade gift from a child that you love. I believe that the most significant gifts make three statements. First, they say, I see you. When someone remembers some random comment you made about something you liked and they track it down, searching online for months to surprise you, that gift says, I see you, I'm listening to you. Significant gifts also say, I know you. Have you ever had somebody give you a gift that you didn't even know you needed and now you can't imagine living without it? 
I had a friend that gave me a pair of noise canceling headphones. They knew I traveled a lot and would put them to good use. And I remember when I took that first trip with those new headphones, I had no idea how great it could be. I mean, instantly the crying babies were silenced in Jesus name. And that person talking way too loud across the aisle, I put them on mute, it was great. My friend knew I needed this before I even knew I did. The most significant gifts say, I know you. And third, the third statement that a significant gift makes is, I love you. Looking back over my life, the gifts that have held the most significance are the ones that express love from the person giving it. Like the homemade gift from your child that they made at school and couldn't wait to give you. Or the special anniversary gift or birthday gift from your spouse or close friend that they gave you and you'll keep it forever. The most significant gifts communicate, I see you, I know you, and I love you. The story of Christmas is really the story about the most significant gift that has ever been given. One of the reasons we give gifts at Christmas is because this day marks the moment in history which God gave each and every one of us the greatest gift that has ever been given, His Son, Jesus Christ. The night Jesus was born in Bethlehem was the night that heaven came close. Emmanuel, that word that we just sang about means God with us, up close. He's not far away, watching from a distance. Jesus is God's way of saying, I see you, I know you, and I love you. See, with the gift of Jesus, our Heavenly Father declares, I see you, I notice you, I am attentive towards you. I think of the way a, a child constantly is saying to its parent, Daddy, look at me, look at me, or Mommy, watch me. It speaks to our need to be visible, to be validated by others. By giving us the gift of Jesus, God is letting us know that we, his children, have his attention. We don't go unseen or unnoticed. God sees us. He sees you today. You might have walked into church and you feel unnoticed. You might feel neglected or overlooked, but I wanna tell you today that your heavenly father, he sees you. You have not escaped his view. You may have been overlooked for a promotion or not recognized for something that you've accomplished at work, but God, has not overlooked you, he sees you. There's a story in the Bible that Jesus tells us about the prodigal son, who after running away from home, decides it's time to go back home, back to the father. And the story reads in Luke 15 that while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and, and kissed him. The father in the story represents God. Jesus told us that story to show us the heart of our Heavenly Father, to let you know that He sees you today, that He's ready to meet you today, even if you feel like you're a, a far way off, and He'll come running towards you with arms open wide. But this gift doesn't just say, I see you. It declares, I see you, and I want you to see me. God sent Jesus to us so that we could have a clear picture of who God is and for His heart for humanity. The book of Colossians chapter one says that Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. He came to show us what God is really like. If you wanna know what God is like, all you've gotta do is look to the life of Jesus. If you wanna know what God cares about, just look at what Jesus cared about. If you've ever wondered, does God care about me? Just look at the way Jesus was always caring about the one person, taking time to help the one that others might have walked right past. He would get down on their level, right at their point of need, and he would help them up. See, through the gift of Jesus, God is saying, I see you today, and I want you to see me. I want you to see my heart, to see me for who I really am. For all of us, no matter where we are on our spiritual journey, Jesus comes again to us at this Christmas to open our eyes up even more clearly to our Heavenly Father and his love for each and every one of us. Through this gift, God communicates also that I know you, the Bible says God knit you together in your mother's womb. That before you took your first breath, he knew every part of you. He is intimately acquainted with the details of your life. And through the gift of Jesus, God is declaring, I know what you need before you even know it yourself. Scripture tells us that he knows my thoughts before I have them, my steps before I take them, and my sins before I commit them. 
God knew that we would need to be rescued from our own sin. He knew all of our mistakes and our shortcomings and that that's why he would give us the gift of Jesus. He knew what we needed before we ever would. Sometimes we can feel like being known is a bad thing. We may have had thoughts or made statements like, well, if they really knew me, they would never love me or accept me. We're often afraid of people discovering who we really are, so we try to hide ourselves and pretend to be someone that we are not, trying to make ourselves appear better than we really are. But God knows it all. Man, the good, the bad, the ugly, and he still sent his son Jesus for us. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That means that the penalty or the payment for our sin was death. But God gives us the gift of eternal life through Jesus. Jesus was born on this Christmas. He came to earth to pay the penalty for my sin and your sin. And in return, God has given us eternal life. How great is that? And through this gift of Jesus, God declares, I know you and I want you to know me. Not just know about me, not just know me in a formal way or a religious way, but up close in a personal way. Jesus came to bring you closer to God so that you could have a personal relationship with him. See, Jesus wasn't born in Bethlehem over 2000 years ago to start a religion. There was already enough religion and religious people before he came. He was born to restart a relationship between you and God, a relationship that you've been created for. See, when God made mankind, he did it for relationship. We read in Genesis where God would be hanging out with Adam and Eve at the end of the day, talking it up. Man, how cool would that be to have that kind of relationship, that friendship with God? Well, I want you to know that's exactly what you've been created for. And Jesus comes this Christmas again to help each and every one of us know God in that personal way. And see, as you get to know him personally, you begin to know his peace, that no matter what you face in life, he is there for you. You can begin to know true joy, that whatever life throws at you, there is a joy on the inside. See, this gift of Jesus is God, God declaring, I know you and I want you to know me too. And last, the gift of Jesus communicates, I love you. God loves you. How do we know? because this gift cost God everything. It cost him his son. So you and I have been redeemed with a high price. God gave us the gift of his son, Jesus, because he loves us. He says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting eternal life. This gift was like the ultimate demonstration of God's amazing love. It declares that you are not forgotten, that you are not alone, that you're not unwanted, but that you are loved. And more specifically, you're loved just the way you are. The Bible says in Romans chapter five, verse eight, that God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Notice it wasn't after you got your life all together or after you made up for your mistakes, it was before while we were sinners. That's when Christ came. That's when he died on the cross for our sins. That's when he stepped out of heaven into a lowly manger in Bethlehem. And he did it for you. This gift of God is saying, I love you and I want you to love me too. And the way that you and I demonstrate our love back to God is by receiving the gift that he's giving, by opening up our lives to the person and the presence of Christ by surrendering to that love today. God has a gift for you this Christmas, and it's got your name written all over it. And you know the best thing about a gift is you can't earn it. All you can do is receive it. And you may receive a few gifts this Christmas, but don't miss out on receiving the greatest gift, the gift of God's Son. I wanna lead you in a prayer today, a prayer for you to receive the greatest gift ever, Jesus. And what I'm asking you to do is to open your life up to him, to receive his love and his grace in your life today and allow him to be the Lord over your life. And when you do, he promises to step into your life to make everything new. And for some of you, this Christmas is a reminder of God's love for you. You've been trying to do life on your own. And today you need to get things right between you and God as well. Would you bow your heads with me right where you are? 
God, we wanna thank you for the gift of Jesus and everything that he is in our life. Thank you that each and every one of us can receive the hope and the life that only Jesus can give on this Christmas. It's what we celebrate. It's why you came. And as we continue to pray, if you want the peace that only Jesus can give, forgiveness from the sin that separates us from God, and a hope for your future, I wanna lead you in a prayer today. And if you would say, Todd, I want you to include me in this prayer that I would know God the way that you're talking about, that I would receive the gift of his grace through Jesus Christ right where you are. Would you just slip your hand up? Just hold it up high all across the room today. And everybody out loud, would you say this prayer with me? With those of you with your hands up, this is your prayer today. Just say this out loud, say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me just the way I am. Come into my life. Give me your joy and peace. Forgive me of all my sins and make me a new person from the inside out. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.